Welcome to the World Beyond Belief. We're glad to have you back. This is going to be a real exciting and informative World Beyond Belief because Ella Draper and Abraham Christie are coming back. And you know, you know how the, the establishment makes the perpetrators into victims? Well, these victims have turned the tide and they've become activists, researchers, and a voice for millions of children that are, that are killed every year, maimed or otherwise uh, harmed by this satanic cult that seems to be gripping most of the world's elite. Uh, so let's welcome to World Beyond Belief, Ella Draper and Abraham Christie. Hi, Ella and Abraham. How are you doing? Hi, Paul and Mindy. Hello, it's so nice to have you with us. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank Great you, thank you. I just um, um, uh, also wanted to say, um, I, I, I meant actually to say uh, to you before, before we started to record, but anyway, it didn't happen. I'm, I'm changing my surname um, back to a maiden name, which is uh, the same as Children God, the first part of the um, surname. So it's going to be Gariva. Um, not Drape anymore, so <laughs> okay. little announcement. Yeah. Well, that's a good way. You've just made the announcement publicly, so it's it's official. Ella Gariva, exactly. beautiful exactly. name. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting us once again. We're ready. It's our pleasure to have you here. Before, before we started the, the podcast, uh, I was talking to uh, Abraham, and he was drawing a lot of, uh, he has done some deep research into how deep this pedophile ring goes into not only the, the government of the UK, but also the culture. You want to start off by, by doing a little bit on that, uh, Abraham? Talk okay. A little bit. Okay. I think anyone who... Uh who was born in, in, in the UK um, during the last during the last century I would say would be aware of the um, the culture the yeah you know, the culture of um, of paedophilia or the culture of buggery in, um, in in public schools there's the young man his name is um, Alex Renton not so young but Alex Renton he's an ex public school boy he went Ashton Public School, and he's just written about the um, the trials and tribulations there because, as you know, most of our MPs come from these public, from these elite public schools, and this culture of buggery within the schools, they just it's just you know it's just translated into their into their adult lives, and you know as as cult members. It's just, it's an integral part of, of, of British culture. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> You've got entertainers like um, <clears throat> Rolf Harris. And um, who's the other one? Uh, Rolf Jimmy, Harris, who's the reason? Jimmy Seville. Pardon? Jimmy Seville. Jimmy Seville, Jimmy Seville, yeah, Jimmy Seville. And now they say that um, rumours that Cliff Richard, a very popular... Um, pop music icon. There are rumours that he's he's about he's about, he's the next one to be sacrificed on the altar, as it were, um, because the the heat the heat really is um, is um, the heat is rising. Thank you. The heat is rising for this um, for this culture of paedophilia because of the number of cases that are being exposed now. And we feel that one of the reasons for this um, uh, explosion in the in the revelations is because many of the children who suffered at the hands of predatory paedophiles during the fifties, sixties, and so are that many of them are are senior citizens now, and 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 they feel they feel that, that you know they, they that they should speak. They should speak up now, and they feel brave enough to speak now because of um, 
because other people are speaking because of the climate and because of children like Elisa having the bravery to speak. And that's giving other people the um, courage, the encouragement to speak themselves about their own particular uh, situation. But you let us know when you'd like us to go into the Baba Kahan um, okay. um, links. Okay. And, uh, and, yeah. I think that's what we'll do next. Here, I want to remind viewers that this culture, I mean, they have a, they have a word in, in, in the British culture, this buggering. And it sounds mm. just like a harmless, playful kind of goosing behavior. But it's not. Yeah. These people that are involved in this culture, when, 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 the, when, the, excuse me, when the anus is violated like this, it's not, uh, it's not a playful thing. The people that are coming forward now are scarred. Sometimes their entire lives are ruined because of this. It's, it's not a playful, lightweight activity. It's, it's a heavy-duty uh, ruining of, uh, of innocence. Uh, it's, it's really a culture of rape, only, only it's almost worse than rape because it's it's, it's more even, I, I don't know, it, it seems like it would be even more degrading than, than that. It, it's a horrible thing and it has to stop. And now we're discovering they do it within the context of satanic rituals. So this thing really has to stop. And uh, Abraham has made some incredible connections with uh, the, the pedophile rings and the social services over there. Do you want to go and elaborate on that one with Barbara Kahn? And yeah, we can't take, we can't take responsibility for, um, <clears throat> for having made all of the connections because you've got, you've got this fellow, his name is George Lees, and his, um, and his associate, a professor, no, he's got Gordon Bowden, Gordon Bowden, and his associate, a professor, George Lees. He's an Antipodean. He's working. He's an Australian, I think, and he's been assisting Gordon Bowden in, in exposing the money, la money laundering operations along the Finchley Road. They, they call them boiler rooms, boiler room money laundering operations. Now, Barbara Kahan, her name. She's a pioneering social worker. If anybody doesn't know, and she was she was the one who legitimised she legitimised Peter Wrighton's career. And her husband was um, Vladimir Vladimir Kahan, and he was an, an Oxford Oxfordshire and um, Tavistock child psychiatrist. So our research has shown that these three together, they were instrumental in formulating the guidelines and policy for what is our social service today. Right. We the mark ups and two, two of the alleged abusers. Their names are on a company that also featured Barbara Khan's name. As, and these are fake companies, shell companies that they create to do some money laundering. <clears throat> okay. You, you know what's happening? Now, what's happening is every time you mention somebody's name, Abraham. What's happening, Paul? Every time you mention somebody's name, Paul? the internet's cutting out. When right. you were, you, we got the three. Hello. Hello. Are we still with you? We're going to need to rehook. Sorry, what happened there, Paul? You said, do you know what's happening? Yeah, what, what, what's going on is we've got the three, Barbara Kahn, her husband, and Peter Wrighton. But when, yes. after you, after you, when you were saying the other names, every time you'd say a name, they would cut out. So yeah. you need to go back to Barbara Kahn, her husband, and Peter Wrighton. Also, I didn't know what, Peter, what was involved with Peter Wrighton until last night. That's a serious. Uh, that's a well, serious. establishment. Yeah. yeah. He's establishment. You see, he's Oxford educated, and um, as I say, he he began teaching at Redhill School in 1957, and him and Barbara Kahan's uh, their 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 careers must have crossed, and it's a bit blurry. It's almost as if you know someone doesn't want you to know when they met. We feel that they that their careers crossed either at Keele University, 
where he began in 1965, where he began teaching, um, training social workers and insinuating, you know, paedophile social workers into the system. Um, we feel that there were already, uh, paedophiles had already infiltrated the system. But he began, um, he organized them and, and, and they began infiltrating the care homes and the, resi the residential care homes children's care homes in, be, in an organized wholesale manner when he when he um, i think in 19 at least in 1965 when he began teaching at teaching training social workers at Keele university and definitely in 1968 when he was the um, i think he was the he was the head of the education department i think um at the national institute for social work i know he was senior lecturer at the National Institute for Social Work in 1968. And we feel that's when him and Baba Khan's paths may have crossed. And um, together they formulated um, many of the policies and um, guidelines for, for, for um, this paedophile charter is the only way we could describe it. Example, remember, it's one of his examples. Um... Well, an example. It says, so, for example, one of the um, one of the points uh, in this program, it says that if a social worker comes across um, um, any information about any any incidents of abuse, it's not it, no need to do anything uh, about uh, it. Yeah, one of in one of his reports, he, he says, says that, don't worry, yeah. it's, it's nothing. It's not it's not the situation of, of a concern. It's no need for it for it for it. It's uh, not a natural. It shouldn't be naturally reported, or, or it shouldn't be automatically reported upon. If a social, if if an adult social worker um, engages in a relationship, sexual relationship with with a resident, if you get my drift, he wrote regularly. He was always speaking in favour of paedophilia. He came out as a homosexual in in, in 1971. To begin with, yes, during the climate of. Um, what would we call it? Mm. Liberalism. That's what we call it. Yeah. That's, and then you've got, and then you, uh, prior to that, recently, you know, I've got to say, um, corresponding with that, we have the sexual revolution, if you will, which was orchestrated by the likes of Rand and Tavistock, we feel. Absolutely. And, There's plenty of evidence. Very good. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Would you like to cite some? Or? Well, the, if you right. go back to the... Uh, if you go back to uh, the Aquarian conspiracy, that's all about, that's a Tavistock creation, and that's all about the hippie movement. And uh, uh, taking down the, uh, the, the natural morals of these, uh, of these Western cultures and replacing them with yeah. sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and pedophilia, apparently. Well, that's it, and then pedophilia, kind of, they slip that in, under you know under the cloak of the um, sexual revolution if you liberalism. will right yeah liberalism yeah and uh, as we say so you've got so you've got the peter you've got the peter Wright and barbara kahan and vladimir kahan sort of um oh, yeah. Oh, yeah academic academic sort of the unholy alliance which and is remember that uh, barbara kahan was connected and remember that barbara kahan was connected with home office and the same home office was uh, um, subsidizing these uh, pie. pie Peter Fanning, uh, very good. Was funding, that's right, in 1971, pie was being funded by, by the home office. And Abraham, and, uh, say what pie is, pedophile? Pie is information exchange, which was founded, um, when was it? Oh, no, it couldn't have been in 71. It had to be later. It had to be... Um, when he was on, on after 74, because it wasn't founded in 74. And there was a fellow, Stephen Freeman, that's right, he was the Pi chairman from 1979, for six years, from 1979 to 85, he was the Pi chairman. And he worked in um, security at the Home Office, yeah, when, at, at a time when, when, um, when Pi was funded, was funded by the Home Office. And how long this Pi was lasting? For, until 1984, it was a decade. So when, when when Peter Wright was on the top of his career. Yes, yes. And, um, well, so Wrighton, yeah. 
at that time, that was when Wrighton was responsible for um, for 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 um, facilitating the infiltration of the paedophiles into hundreds, hundreds of children's homes around across the UK. And and this fellow, his his career as as a predatory, as a as, as a predatory um, as a prolific predatory paedophile, his career went un, unchallenged or undisturbed from at least as early as 1957 until 1992. Oh, yeah. So for over 30, for over 30 odd years, this fellow was able to to to, to infiltrate, infiltrate, to, to 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 how can I say, to formulate the guidelines and policy for our child um, residential care system, and um, and 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 place and place paedophiles wholesale into the into these care homes throughout the UK. And also, this um, talking about why um, they used it as a means to uh, connect, uh, to, oh, right. to create a connection or a network of paedophile, and also to exchange the information about children um, and um, the location of the children as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because prior to the formation of Pi, you know, of course, paedophiles existed, but in a sort of disjointed. You still there? Yeah, I'm. I, we're sitting Hello. here. We're Abraham. We're sitting here aghast. I can't believe. Okay. I can't believe that this culture. I, back back in the 1970s and 80s, and even into the 90s in the United States, there seemed to be some sanity and some morality, and I'm not sure that in that culture they would have put up with someone excusing. Uh, well, being- Go ahead, and, and also establishing a pedophile information exchange. I mean, that, well, that's, out, they, that's outrageous. And they've been, you know, they've been so they've been connecting with each other. They've been writing each other references so uh, they can get jobs. Anytime they, anytime they're caught, well done, good point. Every time they're caught or they're discovered, um, you know, abusing or, or you know, children, what happens is that. They're challenged, they deny, then they then this is the pattern. They're challenged and then they deny. And then you get further further um, reports about their behaviour and ultimately what happens is that they have a gentleman's agreement and they leave their post. But then post to go on to work somebody somewhere else with children, nobody nobody gives a warning of the danger. To the next employee. To, yeah, to the next employees. So and that's a pattern that we've seen, that they write references for each other, for example. To get new jobs. Yes, when Wrighton was working at the National Institute for Social Work, whose, whose, <laughs> whose address happens to be? At 5 to 7 Tavistock Square. Would you know Are you it? there? Yeah. Tavistock Square. Do you hear that? He was working yes. at social workers to 7 Tavistock Square or Tavistock Place, I can't remember right now, but yes. And so the connection with the Home Office, Tavistock, Wrighton, and as I say, the reason Pi was because he had been working at least, you know, as we know, at least since 1957 to develop his career. And Pi the 70s. Pi was established in the 70s? He had support in the in the in the in the government as well. Absolutely, and it, it, because, because this part, uh, this part, this uh, pedophile information exchange, it was taken seriously by the parliament. It was a pre- it was presented in in the parliament. Well, they were they. This is what gave them their real legitimacy because this is because Wrighton, as I say, as an as, a, as an Oxford academic, he, you know, he understood the importance of of doing them. Uh, inquiry, uh, yes, absolutely presenting it correctly. And so, Pi, how did I say, they were able to provide evidence to a Home Office report on lowering the age of consent. To you cut out, but I had heard it was lowering the age of consent to four. Well, that- that's what that's they were trying to do this. This is what Pi is to say the um, if that was what they uh, they recommended in this office report. But that 
the no. this is what ah, I, they came up with this. That is their policy. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's policy. That's yeah. They, yeah. That was their they were lobbying this idea. Yeah, they right. were lobbying it. Mm-hmm. By and they, they existed for ten years. You know. Mm-hmm. I have um, a question a about time. this organization well, to uh, develop and flourish. Absolutely, but but no, for them to organize. Ah, oh, we lost you again. Is this a legitimate organization that yeah, it's legitimizes like a, pedophilia? It's not like a cover for... It's a we'll, lobbying organization. We'll keep a list of all the pedophiles no. so we can warn you? No, that's, that's why I think it's outrageous. It's outrageous. People, there was never people who... Hello, Hello again. Hello, okay, yes. you, you had okay. cut out. And, and I was going to ask you... This organization is right up front about what it stands for. It's not a cover for, for an organization that lists known pedophiles so that it can warn the public. I mean, its public face no. is right out there. Well, what happened? Well, this was in the this se- was in the seventies, in a, during an era of. No, it was it was it was their it was their concept. It was a document. Um, it was the it was two magazines they've been uh, publishing. It's a it's a pedophile organization with their own uh, printed material, with um, which they used to connect with each other and to locate children and uh, exchange the um, uh, some uh, photographic uh, photographic material. And by the way, uh, this uh, Peter Wright and he was caught accidentally. By yeah, 1992, yeah, where uh, where they were a custom, yes. um, they checked a mail from Holland, and Holland is a notorious um, <clears throat> notorious country for the for publishing um, pedophile well, you know, images of children. Mm. So they opened this package, and they, it was addressed to his, to his name, and that's how he was caught. <clears throat> And hadn't, if they hadn't found that package, we wouldn't know any of this information now because he, he seemed to have a charmed, a charmed life because he, he, you know, he knew the identities of all the high-ranking in the paedophile exchange, in the paedophile exchange, um, information network. exchange network, yeah. And, and, the and the government. And that's right. And the reason they were able to obtain or did, to create this, um, this organization was because of the already established members, you know, paedophile and cult members within within the within the government, and so they facilitated facilitated the establishment of of Pi, and then Pi went from strength to strength and had a decade to you know to establish itself and and, and to connect with all of its members, and, and, and they did and, and they as a network and, and of course they're and they're of course. And of course, Barbara Kahn and, 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 and Peter Wright and, and her husband and others, they were formulating, this was just one, one incident in their formulation of, of the policies and guidelines for, for our, for our social, social services and social care system to the degree, and, and, and as I say now, we, have, we, are, we, are, we, we are challenged with the toxic legacy, their toxic legacy of um, uh, large institutions such as CORAM, the third largest adoption agency in the UK, Tavistock, um, social engineering, um, who is it? We've got CAFCAS, the court advisory, what is it, court and... Well, this is like social services, uh, in but the court. in the court, they're no, no. supposed to represent children's uh, interests in the court. Yeah, so we've got social services, CAFCAS, Tavistock and Coram, all working together, you know, with, to, to still... Unholy alliance. Yeah, uh, another unholy alliance. To snatch, to snatch children, but they're, they're merely arms. They're all, they're all. It's all governmental. These are all paedophile mm, mechanisms. Yeah, they're, they're, these are all paedophile mechanisms. They've all been captured by the cult, be they, be they child sacrificing or be they um, not. You know, not child sacrifice, but they are. They are. Um, they're using. They're stealing the children and using them for their own. For their own ends, and that's and that's uh, yeah, and they've and they've and they've had and they've they've had fifty or sixty years in preparation, and we've been sleeping. Mark, it's been gone. Are you still there? Yes, we are. We're hanging on every word. 
I can't. Yeah, they did. The, yeah. P, the PIE still exists, didn't it? Uh, didn't it propose? Well, it, it, Go ahead. They closed 1984. They were disbanded officially, officially in 1984. Well, of course, by that time, you know, all the members, they, they'd networked and they, and they all... Um, and they all sort of like, you know, had everyone sort of contact each other. And as I say, any of them who were caught, as we say, any of them who were caught, they were given, the other members provided, um, provided references for them. And you have, you'd have, what was his name? I think his name was Fraser Morris or Morris Fraser. He was, like, he's a convicted well, pedophile yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and, they, and, and a psychiatrist. And I think he endorsed Peter Wrighton's um, reference of another prolific paedophile, a Charles Napier. So this, it seems to be... The they've been creating, they've been, not, they've been creating uh, like uh, charitable funds, um, like to take children um, uh, to, uh, for, for trips away from home, for example. They all came up with some, some ideas and they've been um, actively implementing it. And I just wanted to come uh, come back to this uh, point, um, to the subject of uh, um, sub uh, social services. Not only they have uh, been writing um, um, creating the policies for the social workers. This is the time uh, they they actually formed uh, social services as we have now. Yes. It was formed then yes, by Barbara them, Kahn, and we suspect Barbara Kahan is pedophile as well, as well as her ch as, a, as well as her husband. Like they yeah. were uh, child brothers. They always worked for they were both something to do. In children, but they, they never had children. And they married in 1955. Both, all three of them, held home office posts at one time, and three weeks prior to the announcement of this of the current. Um, child sexual abuse inquiry three weeks prior to the, the announcement of this one, I think Barbara Kahan was invited to the Queen's Privy Council. It must have been another, yeah, because she passed away in 2000. So it must have been another another inquiry. But she was definitely um, she was definitely invited to the Queen's Privy Council, and she was also an OBE, an Order of the British Empire. Now, so to be Order of the British Empire. So to be that much of an establishment figure and to be so closely associated with the monarchy, you know, we'd be su and we'd be surprised if she wasn't she wasn't a fully fledged cult member. And the fact that they the fact that they are you there? Yes, we we're here, Hello. Abraham. We're here. And the fact and the fact that they've used her name on thirty five of these you know these fraudulent shell money laundering companies. You know, it's almost as if it, it definitely is. They're laughing in plain sight. Exactly. But they never expected this, this information to come out. Yeah, and we can except we cannot take um, credit for it because, as I say, you've got this fellow Gordon Bowden and his and his and his associate George Lees, who has done some fantastic research work. We'll give you the links. Good. So you can put them in on your and YouTube video. channel, and we'll, we'll send you the links to the videos. And then you've also got some really great um, comment, commentators on um, the Hampstead Research blog, which is now Research Hampstead blog, um, making some fantastic comments and guiding us in this direction. We didn't work it out by ourselves. We had the information from um, Gordon Bowden and George Lees. We got another bit of information from someone at Research Hampstead, Hampstead Research, where they had connected Galena Upson to the money laundering, and then we just put the we just put the pieces, all the pieces together when we got them, when we found out about Barbara Cahan, pardon? and Alex Cameron connection that, to Alex, of course, Cameron. And Alex Cameron, but that that was George Lee's and Gordon, that was George Lee's and Gordon Bowden again. So you know we didn't do much apart from actually joining joining the dots, but then you know. And that's, we came up with that picture, and it it all fits. It all fits in place perfectly. That's the important piece because this whole thing is put together so compartmentally. It's compartmentalized yeah. so much that the big the big uh, breakthroughs I don't think are in analysis anymore. It's in synthesis or seeing across the pattern, seeing how this connects with that, connects with that. That's the research that we're doing right now and coming out 
you and everybody else investigating all these other things. It's, tr it's finding links. What did you say, Paul? You said that the big breakthroughs aren't in what they're, analysis? They're not in analysis by digging down and digging down and pulling up little pieces of data. No, it's finding these connections where, you know, the, the queen is connected with Barbara Kahan. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, well, you know, for, for culture to be this imbued with pedophilia, it's got to come right down from the top. And I don't mean Absolutely. Cameron. I don't mean Cameron being no. the top. I mean above Cameron. Cameron. No. It's something about Cameron the full sense. Oh yes, he's just been, he's just been outed by a fellow. We've got a we've got a new sort of knight. We've got a new knight riding in in the truth movement. His name's Chris Chris Spivy. I think I can't remember. I'm not. I may be mistaken it, but I know he's just exposed one of the government a governmental false flag. I think it was the Woolwich false flag. I'm not sure exactly, but he definitely done some great work exposing. A full, uh, you know, UK false flag, and he's just outed. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? David Simon Cowell. Who is Simon Cowell? And and the Prime Minister. Well, let, let, let's just speak. He's just outed David Cameron as a paedophile, and this is a fellow called Chris Spivey. He's just outed David Cameron, the Prime Minister David Cameron, as a paedophile on a radio show, and the link with David Cameron and his brother Alex Cameron QC in this money laundering, the link with them is that Alex Cameron, he, he managed to, to help five of his um, money launderers, five of them to get acquitted on a technicality. So that's what links these money launderers doing the same scam as, as the Galena Ups and Baba Kahan money laundering boiler room scam. And he's getting them off. You, 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 I lost you there. Yeah, we got lost. We managed you were at. Uh, we go ahead. Where, where did we lose you? Well, you were talking about the connection, uh, the fact that Alex Cameron had let off some of these money laundering uh, companies. Uh, that's a big scam that no, should. Go ahead. Five individuals. Five individuals. Five individuals. They were. Um, he, he he managed to get them acquitted on money laundering charges, something to do with some land, the purchase of some land or the, or the sale of some land. This links him into the, the Hampstead Tart money launderers, Alina Upson and Mark Upson, and the Barbara Cahan, Barbara Khan sort of... Fake identity. Yeah, the fake identities. So they all, it, it all links up, if you sort of mean. It's not conjecture. It, it all links up. Right. Yeah, and then when you're talking about the compartmentalization, compartmentalization. Okay, go on, Paul. Sorry. No, no. You, you go ahead. The compartmentalization is because that's that's why people can't see the big picture, because the the main media keeps them focused on analyzing little pieces of it, and they we were never taught to uh, synthesize, look at the big picture and see what's going on. That's, what, that's what's going to break it wide open, the big picture. Connecting yes. Cameron with yes. Kahan, with Richard, uh, uh, Richard Peter Wrightson, Peter Wrightson Peter. And, uh, yeah. and on. I, Upson, Galena Upson and Tavistock, and Tavistock because, and, and the Home Office. They all held the Home Office play, uh, places. Uh, Kahan, Wrighton, and, 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 and her husband, yeah? And then um, Tavistock, Tavistock yeah, featured, Vladimir. yeah, Vladimir Kahan. Uh, we're not sure if he was part of the brain drain that, from Russia, uh, but we're not, we're not sure when he came over because they he married. A right? He's a psychiatrist, right? That's right, he's a child psychiatrist working for Tavistock. But he, they married in 55. So we're not sure where, where he came or if he was born in the UK. Or um, what his yeah yeah but I'm interested because some people say it may be a fake name he um, may have just he may have been a, a spy you know people are, you know giving us lots of lots of different information so yes it, it it's getting rather interesting but the compartmentalization Paul um, 
we've <clears throat> we've learned that the blood products, the consumption of these blood products, yeah, um, due to their um, uh, their contamination with adrenochrome, adrenaline, and uh, other endorphated by the human organism you know, prior to, prior to death, as it were, what happens is that these are these are um, metabolic metabolic um, toxins. Pardon? Yeah, they're toxic. Yeah, toxic metabolic yeah, products, and it seems that adrenochrome and uh, specifically um, as a powerful free radical, what it does, it it um, it causes. A form of schizophrenia, what can only be described, uh, you know, from a psychiatric point of view, as schizophrenia. I mean, some people say that psychiatry is merely a gravy train, another, you know, another government gravy train, and that psychiatry is really the um, shadow. That psychiatry is the shadow government. But we'll use the term schizophrenia, schizophrenia, but we'll use its proper meaning because schizophrenia is something other than multi-personality disorder. Schizophrenia is where the individual compartmentalizes um, the memory of, of unpleasant experiences in, in order to be able to function. And uh, so that, that's schizophrenia. So what it does, it seems that the consumption of these blood products allows the cult members to compartmentalize the, the trauma and the, and, and the murder and, and 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 the rest of their sort and their their behavior oh, yeah. and and so it 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 they become schizo schizophrenic right exactly and then and then by introducing the theta 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 cells fetal cells um, in the, the, um, the coca cola and other products it uh, creates um, a mass schizophrenia. No, the, the, absolutely, yeah, a mass schizophrenia, a schizophrenia of the masses. So what they're doing by by contaminating contaminating the food supply with with these dead fetal cells and cosmetics with these dead fetal cells, and and carbonated drinks, Pepsi and Coca Cola, they say that their um, that their flavour enhances these these cells of dead babies, and what they're doing by contaminating the food supply is creating or McDonald's and McDonald's, of course. And they're creating many reports of McDonald's food being contaminated with baby meat. Um, so what they're doing by contaminating contaminating the, 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 the mass food supply, they're creating a form of mass schizophrenia. So that people are you know, on a mass on a mass scale are able to compartmentalize the um, the trauma of the wars and the violence that we are all suffering and to be able to you know to function within that within that framework. And we feel that's why they're doing it. Plus, uh, fluoride in the water. Yeah, you've got fluoride water to which, uh, make the people docile. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got the and then you've got the attempted normalisation of, 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 of human blood consumption. So and hypnosis from the television. Oh yeah, and the television. Yeah, apparently. And subliminal advertising. And then you've got the sim subliminal advertising and the hypersexualization of children. You've got the YouTube, um, the satanic worshiping videos. It seems that yeah, they've had to accelerate their um, accelerate their program because there are a few black swans that are, that are coming up that they won't. You still there? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. There are a few black swans that they weren't quite ready for, so they're having to um, accelerate their accelerate their program. Exactly. Yeah. Let me put it in context a little bit. <clears throat> Tavistock Institute is an institute set up by the Committee of 300 to psychologically engineer us into the New World Order. And it's, it's, it bases everything on traumatology, which is the study of trauma. And that's how they compartmentalize uh, the MK Ultra victims. They subject them to severe trauma. Now, the, this goes right in with the pedophile network because that's a trauma. When a person loses their innocence, that's a trauma, and that stays with them. And also, as in the case of uh, the Hempstead children, they were drinking blood, they were consuming uh, babies, and they were murdering. This is all trauma. This is how they compartmentalize you so that, so that you don't deal with things like a normal person, so that you 
you know, when you're faced with fear, you go to another personality. When you're faced with uh, something you need to care about, you can go to another personality. So we're creating, uh, like you said before, uh, Abraham, an army of kind of satanic psychopaths. That's, that's what your culture, that's what that culture is creating. At the, at the probably uh, caused by or instigated by, and it's seemingly led by Tavistock that is in the middle of, uh, is, uh, is the, main, the main location for Tavistock at Hampstead or is it in London? In London, it's in London. So it's in Hampstead, actually. Which one are you talking about? Oh, Tavistock. Go on, go on, go on. Tavistock. Is it in? Have, we've cut out again. No, we're here. Okay. Where did, where, did, where did you lose us? When you were saying whether um, Tavistock was in Hampstead or London. Yes, yes, it's in Hampstead. Sorry, I got a bit confused because Hampstead is in London, Paul. Yeah. Uh, so, so you. But then. So, Tavistock so, Place. No, so that was Tavistock Place was else. That's elsewhere. That's in central London. You see. Uh, uh huh. But the Tavistock and Portman Trust is that the one that's in Hampstead? Uh huh. So you were so maybe then. Yeah. Hello, go on, Paul. So there no. So there's no wonder that uh, London in England seems to be the head of the snake in this whole thing. It's because. It probably radiates. Yeah, we don't hear you. You're losing you there, Paul. You're faking a little bit there. Could you, could, okay. you didn't come there. Could you go again? Okay, it sounds like London and Hampstead is... Hello again. Hello, are you back? Yes, yes, we... Good. Good. Well, we. I was just saying that uh, no wonder that culture is rife with pedophilia and satan satanic uh, cultures is because it probably radiates from Tavistock. Yes, and it comes from, and what they, they, they teach them in school. Look, it begins in schools, in public schools, and they send, often they send them to these public schools away from their home boarding schools at nine years of age. Well, sometimes five years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah five years old, as well as that. Boarding schools. Boarding schools. And then they're sodomized because they're, and, Five, seven years old. In these care homes. In the UK and Switzerland, five yeah. years old. And they wow. target the children whose parents, who don't have parents, or the ones that parents don't come and see them, and they target the weaker, the weaker children, purposely. The more rebellious ones, or the ones whose parents see them regularly, they stay, they stay clear of them. Wow. Right, they made that point in the video yeah. that we watched last night. Um, they seem to make that That's point correct. in the video we watched last night. And you know, I was struck by how, how they tried mm -hmm. to make Peter Wrighton look like a really nice guy and he just loved children and it was just a natural uh, extension of his, his love for those boys. Like they were trying to normalize it in the eyes of the public watching. That was a, a it was mainstream. a BBC. It was a BBC. It was a BBC. Yeah, film, no wonder. Right? Exactly. And you said it yourself. It, 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 you said the whole story. Exactly. That's exactly what they did. It was a cover up. It was another BBC cover up. But, um, you know, w with the information that we have now, we can read between the lines and we can, and we can see that Barbara Khan, that was her attempt to, you know, to cover up, to cover up her, her protege, Peter Wrighton. Right. And yes, yeah. but in, when the when the when that when that came out in 1994, which is what's that? Is that 20? Is that that's 20 years ago. Yeah. Mm. So you know, we've, we've had 20 years to to work out what was going on. You know. Oh my dear. Yeah. This is this is amazing, and you know, every day in the news, we hear about another British politician. Um, yeah. Of course, they're li the last one was Lord Jenner. He's still going through. Uh, they said that he and couldn't he couldn't st well. he couldn't stand trial because he was too. Uh, demented, dementia. Yeah, he had dementia, but he stayed in Parliament. And yeah, he continued to vote. He couldn't go to stand trial. That's correct. Yeah. That's amazing. Going out of yeah, I mean they, but they, they, it's, they, they're protecting all this high. Um, sure. High 
highest position uh, cult members. They even I think there is uh, yeah they are they they are, they are kind of beyond the law. Huh? Yeah, they have to. This is the way it is. But people don't know. We didn't know, Paul. You know, we were right. unaware that they'd had decades of you know organizing themselves and insinuating themselves and, and getting their people in all the strategic positions. We were totally unaware. And it's Protect, only, protection, setting up protection for themselves. Absolutely. And, and all these uh, secret services which are... Yeah, the intelligence services. The, all, all the cult over, members. All over. Yeah, all the part. It seems a, a high percentage of, of, of um, the paedophile exchange, inter information exchange members, that GCHQ, they worked at the Home Office in security, that, you know, the, 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 the spies. They're, 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 exactly, the they're, they're, they're double agents. It, it's just, it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a novel, Paul. It's a novel that you wish you'd, you'd written, honestly. And now we're experiencing the, the results of yes, this, yes. of 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 their work, yes. where they, um, it's an organized crime. It's established now, yes, institutionalized, institutionalized child snatching, and people are, and, and they're using the, sec the secrecy there. of the family courts. Yeah, police are involved. I mean, what chance have you got if the police and service are, in, you know, are, are involved? The children said that you know that there were various police police officers that took part in, in the rituals. And they gave names, looks like the entire Hampstead police station was involved, was involved and some of those um, uh, um, policemen and police women, uh, they were, uh, well, they are um, connected, <clears throat> blood connected with, um, uh, with the parents, yes, the members of the cult. They're related. Having they're related. related. They have blood mm -hmm. relations. Some police, some of the police officers that were, that were attending the rituals are blood relations with, with members of the cult. But there was one point that Ella reminded me of earlier and that she wanted to be mentioned here, was the fact that this cult activity, this rite of sodomy, this child sacrifice and this sodomy, because it's, it's a rite, it's, it's child sacrifice and sodomy. Okay, okay, Paul. So the paedophiles will attempt to distance themselves from from it, but they 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 all it's it's interconnect, interconnected. I, I, as I, well as Freemasonry. Yes, ab absolutely. And I feel that Barbara Kahan and her husband were were um, were cool. pretty 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 um, pretty established cult members. Yeah. Are they what, from from our research? Yeah. You know, um, we're going to get a backlash from that, and we know we are. But anyone who does some investigation, a little bit of digging, they'll soon start coming up. With there are some great blog blogs out there. There's one, the Ian Pace blog. There's another one called Zoom Pad, Zoom Pads blog, and there's another one called Bits of Books. And these are all these are fantastic blogs for it for for and Angifan, Angifan, and the Tap, the Tap Newswire. They're, they're they're really you know they're really some great some great blogs awesome. out there. I also wanted to mention, you know, that they're going on about the confidentiality of the children, not to uh -huh. showing their faces or mentioning their names, right? Mm -hmm. It looks like it's been um, this uh, whole concept uh, or the idea was introduced and established at around the same time, perhaps, yeah. in order in order for later on uh, to make it easier for the social services to... To cover this up, and so the par parents cannot um, find the traces of their children because children getting lost in the system after moving from one family to another. They say after third family, which my children actually are in the third family now. What well, this what they told me. After that, you cannot. They um, there is no record. No record. Right? However, however, they are all right to publish. Photographs and uh, mentioning children's names in the newspaper is a specific newspaper. When they put them up for adoption. Uh, when they put uh, them up for adoption, yeah. then they then they can do that, no problem. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So the whole the whole thing about this confidentiality confidentiality is just helpful for them. Sure. Is, is 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 they protecting yeah. themsel themselves themselves? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the confidentiality is not to protect the children. It's actually to protect the um, 
criminals. Yeah, the criminals. To protect the criminals. Absolutely, to protect the criminals. Uh, you know, this is it's endemic in uh, British culture, and I, we have a lot of listeners yeah. that are that are from the UK, and that culture is something that I always held up as being. You know, they, they speak so well, and they always sound more intelligent to an American if you speak with a British <laughs> accent. It's, it's amazing. And um, actually, when Bush was pushing for war with Iraq, I thought Tony Blair, now this is how out of the loop I was, I thought Tony Blair would be some uh, sign of sanity. I didn't know that it was all this big club back then. And Oh, yeah. And what 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 do you think is happening with the uh, with the public in the UK in terms of this? I mean, they've got to be used to seeing their politicians uh, as soon as they die or as soon as they get uh, as soon as something happens to them that they're they're out of the limelight. They'll they'll have they'll be so uh, indicted on pedophilia. Yes, we lost you for for a few seconds. Please. Okay. Do they, you asked about the public. What is it about the public? Uh, what about what? the British public? What, uh, how British public feel about it? Yeah, how, you, yeah, you yeah, that, that, right. There, if um, I can't imagine that, even if it's a culture of buggery, I mean, I can't imagine that um, the average uh, citizen of the UK would 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 put up with this. What do you think? Well. Uh, well, Tavistock and you know, and the government arms, they've, they've done a great job. It's a question, a moral question of bread and circuses. We mentioned Simon Cowell, who's just been outed by um, Chris Spivey. He's a, a producer, and he produces, I think one of his shows is X Factor, where um, there's sort so of big, big, talent, show. big talent shows. And... These are the type of things that, that people are just, they're just brain dead. After 30 seconds of watching television, you're hypnotized. Absolutely. It used to be longer than that. Mm -hmm. Now it's 30 seconds. And so they've got, they've got the, they've got the masses. They've got them sort of hypnotized with television and with McDonald's and Pepsi Cola. And so it's a question of what we call bread and circuses, food and entertainment. And until, until they haven't got any entertainment, until they haven't got any food in, in their belly, I don't feel that the people will really wake up to what's going on. There are, there are, I mean, it's not to put it down, but there are many people who are waking up and it appears that we're, that we're, we're coming to, the, to, a, to a critical mass of, of, awakened, of awakened citizens. But, you know, the, 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 the sorry... The sorry story is, is that the majority, the majority of people are still fast. Right. And uh, children are still suffering. Yeah. And, and, and they're entrenching their position because we suspect that, you know, they've, they've had the goal to, to, to create this pedophile, pedophile and cult charter, as it were, and where, where, they're, where they're now stealing children wholesale and using the secrecy of the family courts. And, and, and the police and everyone else to help them. But the situ situation and you, now... And you said that social services is, is the cult. Of course, social services, yeah, exactly that. Paul. Social services is the cult. Cult is social services. Social services run the court. Right? Barbara Khan, Peter Wright and, and Vladimir Khan, the drug they created this. They developed child welfare, child care system into the social services. That's what they did. And he trained social workers. He he, he trained them and put them into their positions. To create an yeah. unli to create unlived life with, of children as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because what that did, that he, he placed his people in, in positions, strategic positions of power within within the system, and that also allowed their them, the pedophiles, free and easy access to, to the vulnerable children. So um, that, uh, and this was going on unbeknownst, unbeknownst to the general public. Because these people, they presented themselves as, as bastions of, of academia, you know, academic, you know, bastions. And they were 
um, he was quite plausible. He was a plausible figure, as as was Barbara Kahan. But once you know, once you get a bit of information, you can read between the lines. You still there? Yeah, we're, I'm fascinated. I'm also uh, fascinated with your uh, astute observations of the culture over there, because that's, <clears throat> I mean, we're dealing with, well, what I said before, the head of the snake. Uh, I think that there's, I think that these activities go on all over the world. I think that there's many children kidnapped in the United States. But in the UK, um, somebody said they, a the child goes missing every three minutes there. Every two minutes, every two minutes. Every two, two minutes, every two minutes, that we had the conversation for almost an hour. Yeah. And Bill Maloney, we've got what, 30 yeah. children, yeah. 30 children we've been snatched. Kids, we've been talking in UK. And Bill Maloney says that every democratic government is involved in the cult. And as we, as we mentioned in an interview with Alfred Weller, we feel... We can't, we can't give 100%, but we feel that Vladimir Putin is dead and that... And Russia is, in, in, that Russia is involved in the cult and as now, well. And now Russia, because prior to, prior to very recently, Russia, Russia as a staunchly sort of um, conservative country, if you will, they, they, didn't, they had very little time for, for pedophiles or homosexuals, yeah? And, um, but it seems that, that Ellis, Ellis had reports some strange reports coming out of Russia, and it corresponds with our, with our information that Putin is dead, and that Dmitry Medvedev is taking over, and that the Medvedev is apparently a Talmudic Kabbalistic Jew, and he does a secret handshake with the Pope, and it looks like Russia now... And they started to snap children there all over the place. They now introduce this um, uh, practice where if, um, if a family's income uh, below a certain level, they're entitled to take their children, and, the, and there are also um, uh, some strange stories going on, on around orphanages too. Can you say Agenda 21? So it seems that one aspect of the Agenda 21 is depopulation. It looks, I mean, are they depopulating because they fear that they can't control the 7-8 billion people that are on the planet, or are they depopulating in order to be able to steal children? And sacrifice children, and sodomize children. Do you know, or is it a question? Is it, is it both? Oh, I think they want to reduce the population so they can manage them better. And I don't think the people that yeah. remain in that society, the 500 million, are going to be used for much other than uh, producing babies, ritual sacrifice, mm -hmm. because they're robotizing everything else. So they don't need yeah. they don't need people for anything except uh, adrenochrome, uh, body parts, exactly. new babies, organs, organs. Very good, very good, very good. Organs trading. Yeah, very good. Which was wow. the stuff is being is 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 being going on in this cult as well. Yeah. Why yeah. don't you say a little more very about expensive. that, Ella? Because we yeah. had a wonderful conversation a week or so ago but we didn't share it with the audience, so maybe you could give a little detail on exactly what the yeah. adrenochrome, where it comes from, and... Uh, How that fits into the picture. Right. Okay. I see. Uh, well, the reason was we feel that um, they've been doing, uh, they've been involved in uh, organ trafficking is, um, because of the references that children made to us. Like, for example, um, Alisa uh, quite rapidly described the way they've been cutting, uh, uh, like a surgical cut, the, ab the abdominal area, and how they were putting carefully the arms underneath to lift up the bulk of um, the intestines and all kind of organs. Um, and uh, what else? Um, and they also told us they were keeping a record of the number of babies that they were sacrificing. And we suspect that that was something to do with their, their organ trafficking. If, they, if they're carefully removing organs, and they're keeping a, a, an account of the amount of babies, we suspect that they were, we, that they were organ trafficking. And that was around the same time that the children told us that 
white flesh and black flesh taste the same, Paul. Taste the it same. Doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what color the baby skin is. The meat always tastes the same, the children say. Wow. You know, we did it. We did some uh, work on, uh, or we've been looking into this FEMA camps in the United States. And uh, yeah. we, we looked at the FEMA coffins. And to me, they look yeah. like, to me, that looks like Tupperware. It doesn't look like a coffin. Besides, when you do mass exterminations, you just, you bulldoze them into a hole. You don't, uh, yeah. you don't package them in uh, uh, Tupperware. And then, of course, they've got, I don't know how many hundred guillotines that they're storing in, I think it's someplace, uh, Fort Lewis, I think it is. So it seems yeah, to me that. that that's, that that is a, a nice, neat way to separate the useless head. This is getting gory, but the useless head <laughs> from the body that could be trafficked, eaten, or whatever. Well, the skulls, skulls they can wear them when they're doing the dance rituals, can't they? And you said they, they, they look like armor wearing those skulls on their body. Yeah. Wow, I just pictured like one or two skulls around the neck, but they could make a whole outfit out of them? The baby That's skulls? What That's what they said. He, like he, uh, uh, Dearman, he used, he's, he's wearing 30 skulls. He wears 30 skulls, four around the neck. Oh. Yeah, four around the neck, two on the elbows, on the knees. Um, he, oh, he's yeah. everywhere. Alisa said it looks like uh, like uh, oh, armor. armor yeah. oh, the children dear. wear the, the number of skulls the children wear apparently is according to their age. Um, all of oh, the twelve, 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 they were not ten, ten. ten. Yes, Alisa. Maybe the children were all ten. All the children, yes, because they're tw apparently they're, they're twenty special family, and the ch the cult members. Wow. We're listening. Have you? Have you cut, cut out? out? It's interesting how when you say something that the, those who are listening from behind the scenes don't want said, it cuts, cuts out. out. So I think we're drawing plenty of attention. Why don't you, let me do a break. Okay. All right, well, let's take a little break while we wait for the reconnection with Ella and Abraham, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thanks for watching and listening. So we're back from break. Thank you for sticking with us. And Ellen Abraham, are you there? Yes, yes. yes. We're yeah. Yeah. Children. Yeah. Children. skulls. And, uh, so we, 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 we've been talking about children wearing skulls, right? And, or, well, cult members. Cult members. That's right. Okay. And uh, the children were saying that, um, Alice said that they looked like uh, armor. And by the way, uh, the children, also, um, also have tattoos and piercing, uh -huh. and uh, we like we we have particular information on particular children who's, who's got what. But all all the children uh, have tattoos apart from mine, um, and because I was not part of the cult. Right. But if if, if both parents are part of the cult, then both then children are um, having tattoos. And piercing. I see. So that's quite incriminating evidence then against the parents' that's involvement. Absolutely. That's and why they had to ignore that piece of evidence when it was given to them. They had to hide it away in a, in a, in a property store in Chinkford. 
Yeah. So all this, this, all this uh, evidence has been concealed, and uh, the judge, uh, she knew about it, and she said, "Oh, it's a curious fact." Yeah. She and knew. and really done enough about it. She sued the jurisdiction of the criminal court. Yeah. And cleared the the um, criminals from all their uh, wrongdoings in this uh, in in the inside the family court. Can you imagine that? I can't imagine it. I can't. This is this is such a stretch. Well, they've had years. They've had years to consolidate their power. Yeah, and you know they've got. To, as I say, they're, they're stealing children on an industrial scale now. And the next move will be to pass laws that will prevent parents from protesting at the theft of their children. Absolutely. Which they're already doing. That's indirectly. A, it's happening all over the world. Like, huh? Yeah, it's happening all over the world. Yeah. Like they prevented us from yeah. uh, even uh, participating yeah. in the court. Yeah. And now they are intimidating um, and, um, how to say, um, harassing uh, my legal representative, even. Mm -hmm. They're trying to exclude him now from the, from the proceedings. So you have no representation so, at all. We've yeah. got no, we've got, but they're harassing him and trying to exclude him on on, the diff, uh, on different pretense uh, false reasons, yeah. like saying, "Oh, he's there is conflict of interest." Like they're coming with all kind of rubbish to um, yeah to try to um, get rid of us, no, but we're not so easily to get rid of. Yeah, we're not going anywhere for now until we see the children. Look, there, there are spooks all over this pool. They just, you know, they're coming up, and then they they attempt to introduce you to other spooks, and then you had your you had your FBI, Christine Ann Sands, who I'm sure and we mentioned in touch. She's one of your um, Asian patriots. Yeah, she's a, a, a Russian American apparently. She speaks. We feel that the reason she was sent onto the case, they, they sent her to close down the uh, vigils outside the church. But because she's she's she speaks fluent Spanish and fluent Russian apparently, so that's why she was put on the case. And we've had MI5 operatives, Tavistock are all over this, all of the Tavistock nations, the little trolls. They make comments on the on the um, on the videos. It's almost as if they wait for someone to produce a video. They seem to be oh they 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 they, they, they view the videos. <laughs> They give the video more views than, than the general public. Right, that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's true. And, yeah. uh, and of course, uh, we've got McKinsey friends as well, which um, uh, were pretending to help. and uh, But now we find out, we find out that um, they're also there to sabotage and close down the cases and uh, to... Um, described in incriminate mothers or, or both partners. Mm -hmm. uh, they the one who are publishing a court material online. And um, it's a very, very strange situation, Paul, you see. It, uh, Mackenzie friends are there. You, you know who we're talking about, right? They're lay, yes. They're lay, legal, they're lay legal advisors, you see. And um, they're one the one who leaked, uh, who leaked the information online. And one of their, one of their, one of their, um, one, of, one of their members, um, uh, Mr. Terence Ewing, uh, according to a Needle blog, an, um, uh, an article in, in, a, in a blog called Needle Blog, apparently he's a known uh, business associate of them, convicted paedophiles, and um, these are people who are. Yes, yes, he's considered, <laughs> he's considered by a certain judge to be a vexatious litigant. But the point I'm making is that um, these are the people that are <clears throat> placed to assist mothers who have who have had, not to get their children. Yeah, who have had their children taken by the state, or there was a potential for them to be sent to give it over to um, cult member or paedophile abusive fathers. And it seems to be a regu regular occurrence. And when parents come 
in contact and and um, they go to the Mackenzie friends for help. We asked them, you know, they were asked. It was it was actually Ella's mother who questioned that, or about how how many um, how many successful ha apparently they uh, they handled like fifty cases. Well, during the course of the last several years, and my mother said, well, you know, how many success uh, successes there were, uh, and apparently none. <laughs> and no, what no. they do, they. Not, they, good odds. not very good odds, is it? And they keep no. they keep taking you to court. They keep taking you to the court. Well, they know you know going to get anything in the court, but they they engage you. They keep you there, and uh, this is the the agenda. And uh, how could and, you, how could you achieve anything in the court if, where, the, if the court's captured? Exactly. And but why would they release the testimony of your children? To the internet, why did they want to make that so public? Because that's how they destroy. It looks like how that's how they destroy cases. Because what happens is that <clears throat> once <clears throat> case documents are released onto the internet, that gives the court an opportunity to charge the mother with harassment, harass the mother, hound the mother out of the jurisdiction, or or worse, if you will, or arrest or arrest and 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 section the mother. And also there is like another loophole as well um, that um, they rely on is that uh, if, you, if you publish the court material, it cannot be uh, any, any longer valid in the court. Well, of course, this is, is entirely rubbish. You know, if, if, if there is a crime, there is a crime. You know, either it doesn't matter you are this indicates that, uh, you know, if, if something being published, you cannot then... Um, you cannot rely on this evidence in the court. Okay. That's ridiculous. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they kind of like they they covered all all all, all, all bases. All bases. All bases. Yeah. Well, they've had However, they've had decades of that. But on the other hand, on the other hand, they're getting their karmic reward as well. Apparently, um, what is it called? Oh, uh, ah, you were talking about their payback. All oh, right, we're, we're talking about hemophilia, which is um, uh, the inability for the uh, for blood to clot. Yes. And uh, and it used to be quite a rare disease, um, apparently running through royal families, royal and noble bloodlines. Yeah. And uh, now it's becoming more spread. And um, Ashkenazi Jew, Ashkenazis, Ashkenazis Jews. Yeah, I think Paul's familiar with Ashkenazi Eastern European Russian Jews. Yes. Yeah. So they are if to be plugged by uh, um, hemophilia, and hemophilia um, apparently is connected with blood drinking, with blood consumption. Consumption. You got that, Paul? Yeah, that's that's kind so of a blessing. It's kind of yeah. kind of kind of a blessing. It looks like it for somebody. So yeah, that, it, it, it appears to be some mechanism there. Because the Ashkenazi Jews and, and members of royal families seem to be plagued by this, um, this hemophilia. Yeah. They interbreed. They interbreed uh, to maintain the bloodline because they need that bloodline, those bloodline families, because they can interface with the... Uh, with the entities behind the veil. If they, the more pure their blood is, the more easily they can interface with um, other the, more the other dimensions, the other dimensions. The more pure, Paul, I would say the dirtier, I would say the dirtier that blood was. Repeat that. Yes. You say the purer their blood is. I would say the dirtier their blood is because yes. that would create dirty blood. Yes, exactly. And that yeah. exactly. So this. Where are we? Where are we? Now? Well, I I want to make sure that everybody realizes that this isn't a game, that this ruins people, this kills children, and 
the, the massive amount of kidnapping that takes place all over the world. I, I always just put myself in the place of these children. I mean, children, how terrified would you be? I mean, how terrified would you be involved with this? And this is happening all over, oh. all over the place. And it's, the, you're not going to find any recourse in the court system. It's got to be public action. Yeah. It's got to be public outcry. People have to know about this, and they have to get up and spread the word about this. And you can't... Absolutely. You can't read a... We had a... We, we had a comment. Hello? What's going on? Spooks. You okay? Hello? You okay? It sounds like it's... Sounds like things are banging and it's dropping. A fire, it's a fireworks going on. Like, look, maybe if I pass this. It's just fireworks. like really, like nearby, maybe our neighbor is having some party. All right, that's just... We're celebrating our... Second interview with me. No problem. Yeah, just, just so near and nearby. That's why it's so loud. All right. Sorry that you have to go through that. I hate the sound of firecrackers, although they're pretty to watch yeah. when they have nice displays. So back to what you were yeah. saying. Yeah, I was just <laughs> it had, the recourse has to be with people. People have to, especially in England. Now, you know, we get comments. We get comments by spooks, probably. Don't you know that it's been shown that, you know, this is a fraud to begin with, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I don't make comments back to stuff like that. But how on earth could that have taken place? I mean, really? Put, really? I mean, what would Abraham and Ella have had to do to fake this thing, I mean, I, oh. I, I, I mean, it just couldn't. It, it's, it's totally impossible. Go ahead. Do you have a comment? Go ahead, Abraham. The fact that the amount, the, the amount of spooks and the amount of spook activity and the trolling and, and the rest of it, it and just shows with agents and the, and the agents and and, and the COINTEL, the the the, the, the agent provocateurs. It just. It, you know, it indicates the degree to which, you know, the authorities are concerned and it shows and it proves to us, it, it, it endorses, you know, it proves to us clearly that we're on the right track. Yeah, you're close. Absolutely. And, you know, whenever we get anywhere, any time we start digging and we start to get close to some hot information, it looks like they, they, they attempt to prevent it from coming out or, or they increase their, they increase their, um, their attacks, but you know, by distracting, confusing, yeah, or misinforming, and, <laughs> yeah, it's what they do: dis deceive, distract, and destroy. Is, is their in their intention? But we, um, how can I say? It just it just confirms to us that we're on the right track, mate. When they raise up, when they raise their game, and so um, yeah. And I also wanted to mention that. <clears throat> Um, uh, right now, uh, we're working on um, uh, connecting with um, uh, with other parents and uh, specific, uh, especially mothers who are in the similar situation. And uh, so we will not we want to unite forces and uh, like just to use this opportunity to uh, <clears throat> to say that uh, those mothers or those people who know about people in similar situation, please forward um, them to us. Uh, we are about to launch um, a web website called Hands to Cover Up. I don't think, uh, did we mention before? No, we no, no, go into uh, this. This is important. Right, let right. people know and, how uh, they can reach you. Uh, there's going to be email there, so people can uh, reach us by email. And um, so uh, one of the uh, our goal, goals will be to... Um, 
to file a joint application in the um, court, in the European Court of Human Rights. Um, it's um, although it's a lengthy process, but um, we feel that if um, we're going to do it jointly, it's going to have more power. And um, and there are a number of other things which we're thinking to do as a as a as a collective joint force. And um, and in other things like while I'm talking now, I just quickly mentioned that the 23rd of uh, July is going to be a uh, hearing of our appeal, which is um, going to be an open hearing, which means members of public can come and listen to this um, to this hearing, which is most likely going to be another attempt to block us. Where is it going to be? Is that it's a, on, the, on the 23rd of July in a Royal Court of Justice, I think it's 9.30, but people can check on the website of the court, of the, the court have the um, website, so the hearing will be listed. And um, so we, um, we encourage people to come and support children to help us to return children and um, to come to the hearing or to come and um, uh, show their stand. Yeah. Even just to come and, as a vigil, just to let these people know that we know about them now. And we're not gonna. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna stand for it. And we say no. We're not. You know, we won't put up with it. Well, good. Let's have this be a word to everyone who lives in the area to show up at the Royal Court of Justice on July twenty-third. Probably oh, at 9.30. People, are you guys going to... Go ahead. Are you guys going to be there? Do you have to we're be... We're considering it. We're considering it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but... Um, be careful. We're going to be represented. Well, if we get our legal team, it all depends on what the legal team says, you see? Mm -hmm. Right. Is there any kind of a warrant or anything for you, for your arrest? Is there any kind of a warrant for your arrest? I mean, I, I know that you have left the country and your whereabouts are being kept. Uh, but I didn't want to. You see, they, they didn't really want to arrest us. They wanted to either um, uh, do something to us while grab they us, were there. Grab us, to grab us. And, 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 and section as possible. Or, section or in prison. Ella. And then, um, then they, you know, they ended up pounding us out. Right now, tell and, our American. Uh, I Ella out and I came out to keep her company. Tell but, our um, American audience what you mean by, if you would tell our American audience what you mean by section you, because that's not a term that we are familiar with. Right. Okay, they would they what they 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 have a general mo, you know, and they would they would institutionalize the mother. They would attempt to question her mental health. And then institutionalize her because they've got, as I said, they've got the, the, the cult member psychiatry. She's still there? Yes, we yeah. are. Yeah. Oh, they put you mental, mental yeah. health. They put you in a, in a, yeah, in a, in a secure institution because, as I say, they've got their Tavistock psychiatrists, haven't they? That are all um, cult members. Even even, even children, children were also um, yeah. as. Uh, Assessed by the sculptors who happen to be uh, doing it, doing this in every single case. Well, in Dr. many Sturge. cases, Doctor Sturge, Doctor Sturge, and she's she's infamous, infamous uh, cult. And she's well, she's no? the infamous Tavistock cult psychiatrist, psychiatrist, child psychiatrist, to snatch to snatch the children. Yeah, and there are various cases cases against her at present. It's, it's um, Sturge in Tavistock. And by the way, talking about um, uh, medical professionals uh, who are involved in this case, Dr. Holtz, who um, uh, okay. categorically, um, in, were, in, were categorically insisting uh, on the fact that these children were... Um, they, they, they were, they're, they were, they were right. penetrated there. The, treated by plant force instruments over a long period of time. And she was the same doctor in another case where um, she... Um, baby P, this is an infamous case in the Harringay Social. This is a baby P. And uh, Dr. Hodes gave... Um, she examined the baby and she advised that the baby was in danger. The baby P was in danger. Her, her report was ignored. By well, the court, not by party. Tell me. I don't know uh, by uh, which court, but no. by which judge. 
but uh, her report was ignored, mm -hmm. and, and soon after the baby was, the baby was killed. Baby P died at the hands of his uh, at the hands of his abuser. Yeah, and there seems to be intelligence service um, uh, and, and fingerprints over this over that particular case as well. And what happened? What happened during the proceed during this legal process? Many months now ago, maybe six, five six months ago. Um, I employed um, uh, a former, former detective who is specialist in this um, interview in the interviews called ABE interviews, achieving best evidence interviews. Is this is how uh, my children been interviewed? This is called AB, right? AB interviews. So um, she mentioned this case of uh, baby P in her uh, in her report in her analysis. She analyzed both videos and um, and the police report, and she's uh, she came to the she she's um, stating her conclusion that um, the case was not um, fully investigated and uh, prematurely closed, something like that. I don't remember word for word. However, but her findings all support the children's allegations. Yes, exactly. And um, what happened? Our our hearing was hijacked by. Harangay Council, who was involved in this baby P case, and I at that time I couldn't understand why, why, what the fuss was all about, and then we understood why they overreacted. Is because of is because of the connection of the same um, a doctor. It's a similar similar background. Yes. Or kind of the underlining um, We feel that the intelligence service is all over that case as well as this case. But as we said, is that the baby P case, what happened was that Kylie Wilson, who was employed by us to do some um, analysis, yeah, analysis. Uh -huh. to do an analysis of the children's um, statements and interviews, she mentioned a sibling, a sibling of baby P in one of them, in the reports, and for that, she was hauled over hot coals in the court. Since she was summoned to the court merely for mentioning the sibling of baby P. And this information, this information is readily available on the internet. And so they overreacted. This is something that we found within this case, um, repeatedly throughout the case. They overreact to sort of innocuous situation. It reminds me of when I went to the playground to collect, went to the school one day to collect Elise and Gabrielle from school, and the teacher was giving out sweets wholesale. She was giving sweets out wholesale. Now, why did she be giving out these these sweets with processed sugars just wholesale to the children? You know, on a Wednesday, you know, we don't, you know, we didn't know. However, what we later discovered is that the sweets are how they pay the children yeah. for, you know, not revealing what goes on. However. However, Elisa, she was not permitted to eat these sweets, these uh, refined sugar sweets, because they, she came out in a rush. She had an allergic reaction to the refined sugar. But, uh, but I found out later that I thought it was sugar that, con that uh, caused this reaction, and I notified the school to make sure that, you know, please don't, don't, don't give her any sweets because of, of this reaction. <clears throat> and I was convinced about it. It's only later when um, Alice was telling me that um, the teachers, um, I think it was Miss Bridges and Miss Essel, they've been putting they've been putting makeup on children, on the girls, and dressing up, uh, dressing them up like little prostitutes. Uh, we into uh, transparent little dresses, black and uh, for the fun for the fun, for the fun sex, parties. sex parties. Yes, that's how that's how that but anyway, uh, but then. Um, uh, Abraham saw this uh, oh, and I, became a witness of the scene. Yeah, I saw him. I saw them get, uh, as I arrived at the gate. I saw the teacher giving out the sweets, and I, I approached her and I asked her why she was giving because Elisa saw me, and she just as I arrived, she just handed a packet of sweets to Elisa. Elisa quickly ha she immediately handed them back because Elisa had seen me arriving. So I asked the teacher why she was giving sweets out to all the children, um, and specifically to Elisa when she knew that Elisa. Um, she wasn't permitted. She, yeah, and the teacher, she told me it was her birthday. She said, oh, it's my birthday. Which it wasn't. Which we later discovered that it wasn't her birthday. However, whilst I was speaking to her, I was approached by 
someone we now know to be a Mr. Louis Holly. He's um, the children of the legs that he, he repeatedly sodomized them in the, um, in the classroom. Aggressively, aggressively raped them. Mm. Yes, and he mm. used to give them, and he'd give them a refresher, a refresher chew a sweet to chew on in case they, if they felt any pain. So he's, you know, he approached me in the playground. We didn't know about this then. He approached me in the playground, and I, I, I took him away and moved him away from the group of children in the teacher. And um, I explained to him that I was concerned about, you know, his, this policy of giving giving these refined sugar sweets out to the, to the children. Well, specifically to my to my children, because the school knows very well of this. Uh, of this problem, uh, which has been ongoing for um, for almost two years, and then they so they created a big fuss. They uh, then took Abraham to I explained to Superior and yes, I explained to them. I explained to them that I was employed as a family nutritional advisor, and I was concerned. <clears throat> he became very agitated, and <clears throat> I became a little bit concerned about his behaviour. So I stepped away from him. Um, He's a flamboyant, he's a flamboyant, um, flamboyantly dressed fellow. He likes to wear pink and yellows. And, and orange. And orange, and he, and, dyes, and he dyes his hair blonde. Now, <clears throat> um, we're not homophobes, but um, we're just describing, describing his absolutely, hair. Absolutely, absolutely. Describing. The bottom line, the bottom line that uh, uh, will happen before Abraham has arrived back home that day, in the, which is like the school is very close to us, like 15 minutes. Yeah. Social worker already called, school. where school already, um, it was the, school, called social services, and they already told me that Abraham behaved aggressively, and uh, he's, he called, he said, that they, well, that they alleged that, he said they, um, he said that um, they've been giving children drugs, which is of course not true. So they be, they be, they uh, created a big fuss. It's a very similar situation. They overreact to little, um, seemingly innocent um, incidents. And be, in the beginning, we thought, you know, like why was 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 going to happen? Why, why did they? Why did they need to call to call the, social services? So because he system? called them. He called them uh, giving sweets. Why? Which is wasn't her birthday. She said and no. they lied. Why would they go, Why would they do do that? And then of course uh, we don't understand what happened. Because this is their currency. This is they give children uh, sweets right. as a payment for uh, for sex, as well as money. I think. Yeah. As well as, of course, they're threat threatening, threatening children too, with death if they talk. Well, I think it all makes sense, because you know, Abraham, you and I have talked about this death cult before, and you know, oh, the yeah. people that are in this cult are as much victims as the people they're victimizing. I mean, they're, they're kept under wrap with fear. And so when you, when you start to investigate a fear-based culture like this, they're, they're going to overreact. Because as, as we were saying before, we might have even said it in the last interview, this death cult is to avoid their death. They're terrified of death. That's why they do sacrifices. That's why death is their biggest nemesis. It's their biggest fear. So, so they're, they're fear motivated. And so they're going to overreact. I think that might be an Achilles heel. Oh, we missed a bit of that. Can you do that again? That's, we, we, we're loving that, but we missed a couple of bits okay. of that. Okay. We were talking about this being a death cult. And the people that are in this death cult are as much victims as the people that they're victimizing because they're stuck in there they're held in there with fear certainly they certainly they get money and certainly they get associations and now we know that they've got they could have influence with the court system they can influence all the way up to the queen probably uh, so yeah. they get there's certain benefits but they're going to overreact because it's a fear motivated it's all about fear it's not about love and when you're in fear, you overreact to everything. And what I was saying is, that might be a vulnerability that we should exploit. 
I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know exactly how, but certainly, but coming out with information helps. Why? They create war, they create war, and they create terror. This is why they create wars and terror, Paul. To, ma to maintain this low vibration, this low, fearful, deathish vibration on the planet. Are you still with us? I'm still with you. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so, when we, when we get rid of them, and we have no more wars, and we raise a vibration, a faithful, a loving, faithful vibration, because fear is the opposite of faith. And you know that hate is the opposite of love. So fear and hate are associated as our faith and love. And they want to keep us in this fearful, hateful vibration. But it's the end of that time. It's so last century. It's yeah. like... It's like me, I was, oh, I don't even want to talk about that. And it's just, it's just so last century, Paul. We are the, you know, this is the new, Elisa and Gabriel, they are the new. They are the indigos, they are beautiful, bright children to lead us, to help and lead us into this new age. And they, these death cults, they want to steal the, this, this for their beauty, to steal their purity, and to prevent the, the, how can I say, the advent of, of this, of this new age. You know? But it comes. And, and, and salvation to everyone, you know, they will benefit from, from this new age as well. Especially if they change their lives. We bring them, yeah. Hello? Hello, we're still, we're still here. Yeah, I think it, I, I mean, think, I when think. When we speak about, when we speak about cannabis as, as, a, as a pure food, you know, we're often, we were often challenged before. But now we've, you know, now we've come out of the science, with the science. We're just we're being met we're being met with silence and um, you know uh, and sometimes abuse but this is what happens when when new ideas you know are, are presented in the in the public arena but um, as you've seen at www.cannabisinternet.org the information right there the science to confirm that cannabis is the perfect food for humans. Right, let me clarify a little bit here. We're not talking about uh, smoking it or, or even doing anything that would make you hallucinate or, or no. alter your consciousness. We're talking about eating hemp, which is... Raw. Uh, a, no, 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 just raw, raw cannabis, we're talking about eating it raw. Because, go on, Paul. You, you, what's, on, the Paul. Difference, what's the difference between cannabis and hemp, Abram? Okay, you can get hemp, THC varieties of hemp, but the basic difference is that the main psychoactive cannabinoid, THC, in its, in its fresh form, it's, it's, it's a THC acid. But hemp varieties are generally industrial varieties, and they would be low THC because they would, they would be cultivated for industrial purposes, for fiber, possibly for 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 seed, for for food, or for herds to make building materials or to make plastic. There are many reasons you would put, you would cultivate industrial hemp. But industrial hemp doesn't necessarily have THC. Then you've got cannabis or marijuana varieties, which often are cultivated um, to have high okay. high THC percentage because people are using them generally. They'll be generally used for smoking, okay? Because the reason why people ask is, you know, many people are still smoking, and, and they're unaware of, of, of the science which confirms that, that cannabis is a perfect food and we shouldn't try or eat it, is due to prohibition in 1937. Uh, but um, what were we saying? The difference between cannabis and hemp, which is a big market, which is, oh, uh, yes, and the, the, the prohibition is another part of yeah, the, 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 um, the mind control and the social engineering. And another point is that the Pope, apparently Pope Francis, or one of the Popes who did come out um, opposing, opposing the use of cannabis, opposing it most very recently. There's coincidentally. A, yeah, coincidentally. But um, as I say, cannabis is a perfect food. 
Um, it's the source of an ideal blood tra transfusion for humans and mammals. And the science is out. You can go to cannabisinternational.org. And um, it's the perfect food. Uh, and the FDA know, because the FDA have got about six or seven patents on cannabis on cannabis derivatives, specifically um, CBD. As I say, when these um, when these cannabinoids are dried or heated, they change from their from their acid form. So you have THC acid, cannabinoid acid. They change from the acid form and they become neutral compounds because they lose that they lose the, poisonous, huh? they lose the acid of the molecule and then they then THC can become poisonous at low dosage because it's not a you know neutral THC is not a natural compound even though other people derive some endogenic or some sort of spiritual benefit from from these compounds they're really not natural compounds and we should really be consuming the plant fresh and raw and in that state we can actually you can actually consume 50 times as much thc because you're, you're consuming it in its natural form and so raw fresh cannabis isn't psychoactive you'd have to eat about two kilos of it to acquire any to experience any um, psychoactive effect and it's best and best uh, for all the nutrients and it's yeah it's, it's the best source of essential of essential nutrients not only are we challenged when we're eating these you still with us yes this is this is interesting not only are we challenged by toxins toxins in the food supply or genetically modified or food, free radicals or, or free radicals or fetal you know dead fetal cells and that but we're also challenged by excess non-essential nutrients non-essential because we only the body out, which wear out the body and overwork and overwork the human organism. However, cannabis is the best source of essential nutrients, like essential carbohydrates. What people don't realize that there are there are essential carbohydrates, essential sugars, and non-essential sugars. Now, most foods contain a combination of essential and non-essential sugars. However, only certain foods are replete in the essential sugars and lack the non-essential sugars like cannabis there are also essential fatty acids now all raw plant foods contain a combination of fats saturated fats monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats but it's the ratios in which, in which these these fats are found that that make cannabis such a such a unique food because it's balanced yes yeah, perfectly balanced and the nutrients are perfectly balanced and then you've also got essential amino acids now the seed of the plant is 35% um, protein. And two thirds of this protein is in the form of globular edestin. Globular edestin. Have you talked about this now before? I don't think I have. Edestin is the most, was the most studied um, protein in its molecular weight class. Have we spoken about this before, Paul? I, I don't think we got this deep into it. Um, I, I want to make sure. I, I want the... Uh, go ahead. Right, the diet, and also the THC, raw, raw THC acid is the most powerful antioxidant known, so that makes it the ideal antidote for schizophrenia caused by the consumption of human blood. Because Dr. Abraham, psychiatrist Abraham Hoffer and his colleague Humphrey Osmond they showed in a paper called the adrenochrome hypothesis they showed how schizophrenia through the um, impaired metabolization of um, adrenaline and adrenochrome in the human organism they showed how schizophrenia caused by these um, toxic m metabolites how it can be treated with mega doses of antioxidants they were using vitamin C and niacin, but we found that the fresh THC. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, did we lose you? Yes, yeah, we did. we did. You were talking oh, we about. Lost you. Wow. They were they. Yeah. They were using vitamin C and something else. Niacin. Niacin. Using, but you can you, you can do this with. Uh, well, go ahead. It's kind of THC acid with fresh with fresh cannabis juice because look, our blood hemoglobin hemoglobin is made of two proteins 
a heme protein and a globular protein, okay? And the best source of these, of these two proteins is a cannabis plant. The heme protein... Plant, flower, and seed, right? Yes. You, if, you, if we use the juice of the, of, the, of the leaves, the flowers, and the seeds, we will produce an ideal blood transfusion, plant-based blood transfusion liquid for humans and mammals, which, can be, which will delete and prevent schizophrenia and any mind control programming. And not only that, it's capable to repair our DNA, where our blueprint, our DNA, mm -hmm. and also supplies the material to then repair body according to this uh, repaired uh, genetical blueprint. Did you get that, Paul? Did you get that, Mindy? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And this means that the children kidnapped in this process could be rehabilitated. Most, most definitely. And when Ella was taking... And maybe, uh, maybe the uh, perpetrators too. Ah, oh, maybe the cult members too. Very good. Yeah. Well, when Ella was taking um, some of these juices to the children... Um, no, I took it only once. And no, it, 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 wasn't, okay. it wasn't even a cannabis juice, it was just a green juice. Okay. It created such a big uh, stir there. And after that, they prohibited me to bring any food to the children. Mm -hmm. Any snacks or any of their favorite uh, treats. Hmm, this this is how scared they are of green juice. Right. They're... Apparently. They're into adrenochrome. I wanted to go. We. It seems to me that we talked about before this thing, adrenochrome, which is um, a combination of adrenaline and blood. Which I, I give. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this this comes from. It's a breakdown. If somebody's very it's a terrified. Breakdown. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, it's, a, it's a breakdown product and the tablet of of adrenaline. What is this thing? But, yeah, epinephrine, that's, just, that's another name for adrenaline. It, it's a breakdown product, Paul. And it's, it's something of a, a, a hallucin. And um, it's got, it gives an effect of DMT, DMT, but it also is a, a psychotomimetic, meaning that it causes, uh, it causes schizophrenia, uh, delusion, yes, psychosis. psychosis, a mild psychosis, a psychotic episode, of extreme violence, delirium, delirium and delusion. Okay, so um, uh, it is not only caused by the consumption of blood; it can be caused through impaired, impaired uh, uh, metabolization of of um, adrenaline. If your body can't break down adrenaline properly, if it doesn't have enough free, um, uh, if it doesn't have enough antioxidants to neutralize the adrenaline then then you can have you can have a problem with um uh, excess excess adrenochrome and that's when it causes um schizophrenia and delusion delirium psychotic episodes and uh, extreme violence and this this we feel is um go on sorry paul no so what, what i understand is they they pursue this adrenochrome. They want it. They want to drink this. They want to give it at rituals so that it can have these effects. Is that correct? Am I, am I reading stuff in? It would, no, it would appear simple. Um, we, we can't be sure of doing it, if they're consciously doing it, or through the consumption of the adrenalized organs, they become addicted to the stimulation, the powerful stimulation of it, and that is a sort of... Or, or maybe they're actually conscious and harvesting it. Yeah. Oh, it's the, possible yeah. they are conscious of this and, and harvesting it too. Yeah. I think so. We can't be sure one way or the other, but both you know, both possibilities could be... Um, However, adrenochrome is there. They're yeah. consuming adrenochrome. They're consuming and it, they, yeah. And they're, they're going schizophren schizophrenic. Yeah, so they could... They, I mean, we suspect that they could... I mean, the, the odds... were schizophrenic yeah. as well, by the way. That's right. The odds are more in favour. The odds are more in favour of them being aware of it because they traumatise the infants before they sacrifice them. Right. So we... 
we feel that that because that's what happens. Informal. We can we can expand on yeah, this. Yeah, that's see when they traumatize the children, that causes the child to create more adrenaline and thereby more adrenochrome in the blood. And so when they consume the blood, they get they get the um, because it's it's definitely it's definitely um, it's definitely so they get psychedelic. It's a hallucinogen, and and they get. Uh, uh, they get a stimulation, a powerful stimulation, and some people consider it to be the most powerful drug on the planet. It seems to be the drug of choice of the cult members, anyway. What? And it's stored in the heart, right? It's stored in the heart. Is this yeah. Paul? Is it, I think it's stored in the heart, or is it manufactured in the heart? It's I think it's manufactured in the heart. It's, it's manufactured in the heart and stored in the adrenal gland. Don't quote me on that, but that's the information we have. And this is why you see, in there are a few videos out now. And you see people, cult members, consuming some flesh. And you see one cult member with the heart. There's a pretty graphic drawing of a cult member with the heart in their mouth. And in the in the um, Apocalypto movie of um, Mel Gibson, yes. he shows he shows um, the um, ritual sacrifice of the Aztec of the Native American Indians. He shows a you know a culture of um, child sacrifice, and he shows one of the priests. Removing the heart from a from a living victim and holding the heart up still pulsating, if you see what I mean. So it looks like the heart was a prized was a prized organ, and that could possibly due to its its um and demon, it being the manufacturing site of um and demon he 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 was the one who ate his heart right looks like because um it seems like those um certain certain uh, cult members they had different parts of the body. Like Mr. Um, Hollings uh, had feet, or um, uh, Forrest Dyke, she had something else. I can't remember. I can't, we've, we've got it all written down. We've got, but we've got like the information. It's yeah. just so much information, so much detail to, to, to remember now, yeah. We just produced a podcast uh, two weeks ago. I think Ella, Ella, Ella saw it. It was on CERN. And in that video, we have a picture, a couple of pictures of Keisha, who's a famous singer. I don't know whether she's from the UK or the US. Yeah. Drinking she's blood. Not. Drinking blood yeah. from a heart. On stage. Uh -huh. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds right. Yeah, that's what they're doing now. So let me, let me, uh, let me uh, speculate here. If it has the same effect as DMT, I have the feeling the DMT breaks down the veil between two dimensions. Uh, yeah. This is the dimension they're trying to access through CERN. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's the, uh, the dark dimension. And DMT allows manifestations to come into your mind from this other dimension. I mean, I, we can call it hallucinogens, hallucinogenics, but I think yeah. it's... It's I actual, it's man I think it's manifestations. Bam of tryptamine. I would say that you're protected by your own, by your own karmic, by your own karmic aura or your own, um, your own goodness, I would say. I would say only, it, it depends on your intent. I, you know, I'd say in regard DMT, because it's a natural, it's a natural biochemical that we create within our body, dimethyltryptamine. So I wouldn't say that it necessarily leaves you up open to um, to demonic to demonic but the, i would say that the blood drinking the blood drinking yes because you're drinking you're drinking blood and, we, and you know it's been prohibited by all all, all, um, all religious traditions the consumption of blood products and you know we feel that that that's due to um to many reasons but one of them definitely that um it causes psychotic episodes and it's highly addictive and draining of the blood from the flesh won't help it either. Oh, that's right, yeah. Because they know that, yeah, the ancients knew that we shouldn't drink, you know, that, that it was prohibited to drink blood products. And that's where um, halal, the concept of halal meat and kosher, kosher meat came from because <clears throat> they knew, these ancient cultures knew that we weren't supposed to consume. So they tried to cheat blood products. <coughs> so they, yeah. They said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll have halal meat, we'll, we'll, we'll remove the blood. But you can't remove the blood from the flesh because the flesh is created from the blood. So there's no such thing as halal meat or kosher meat. 
And you can't, you can't, yeah. they can't escape the karma as well, coming the killing. You got that, didn't you? No, say that again. As I said, you can't escape the karma coming with the killing. With the killing, exactly. And if you're doing this within the uh, confines of a, of a death cult uh, ritual, ritual, uh, you're certainly going to get the uh, the negative Maybe effects. You, you know, you know, you're going to get the negative effects. Absolutely, it's like it's like when we wear, if you know if we wear leather shoes or we eat any meat, you know, we're, right. we're you know we're we're implicated in the suffering of the animal. You know, whether we, we we're conscious of it or not. Right. Okay. You know, so this is how they we take it off. This we take it on on the energy. And this is another way in which they've mass mind controlled us to accept the the slaughter and the consumption of dead carcasses. You know, when there's no need for us to eat, there's no need for us to eat other sentient beings. We the have a bit. perfect food. This is why they 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 don't want us to, to discover that cannabis is a perfect food for humans. And that are you still there? Yes, I am. Yeah. This is why they don't want us to, to discover or the information to be sem disseminated that cannabis is a perfect food for humans because people would realize that they can grow grow their own food. They don't need to be dependent. They don't have to be dependent on, on centralized idea. government or centralized food supply. They can go and live independently in nature and create their own perfect food, quite simply. And this is why you've got the likes of Rand and Tavistock mind controlling the masses. You've got the Pope coming out against cannabis right now. All of a sudden. <laughs> All of a sudden. And these are, these are the Jesuit, child sodomizing Jesuits. Yeah. And now they come against, against, against cannabis. That, that would be an endorsement in itself, you know, the fact that these guys... Exactly, exactly. Well, hey, let me, switch, yeah, let me switch gears a little bit. Were you, were you saying um, a while back, it might have been a conversation we had on, on World Beyond Belief, or it might have been just a private conversation we were having, were you saying that there was some way that they can commercialize adrenochrome or market it, or is that is that possible? Or yes, it looks like you can, you can, you can, um, you can market it. Uh, um, as I said before, that it's oil soluble, <clears throat> it's oil, fat, and alcohol soluble, and so they can they can stabilize it in um, in, in in the fridge, in the fat, or alcohol. I don't know how long it stays or what antioxidants they may need, but we know that they can't, that, that, you know, and you only need microscopic amounts. But there are people who are perpetuating the myth that um, adrenochrome doesn't exist. You know? Uh huh. As, as well as uh, ritual, don't, don't, is it, don't yeah, ritual, exist. Ritual, ritual child abuse, yeah, child sacrifice and child sodomy ritual don't exist, yeah. Yeah. Neither did the yeah. satanic cults. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, going back to the blood pool. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're good. You brought us back to back on track. The hemoglobin, heme. The blood is made of two proteins: a heme molecule and a and, and, and a glob and a, a heme protein and a glo and globular protein. The heme molecule is identical to the chlorophyll molecule, the green plant of blood. is identical to the red part of our blood, the red blood cells, apart from the central atom in our, in our blood cells. The central atom in heme is iron, and the central atom in chlorophyll is magnesium. And the, and, and the magnesium easily atom at the center... Replaceable. Yes, and they can, they can easily replace each other by a, by a process known as biological transmutation. That's a, a theory that was developed by a guy, a fellow called Louis Cavan. But you, so you can look that up, biological transmutation. So the heme molecule and the chlorophyll molecule are, are almost identical. Um, but it's not that simplistic just to drink chlorophyll, the green part element of blood, because our, as, as we said earlier, our blood is made of two proteins, heme proteins and globular proteins. Now the best source of the globular protein happens to be the seed of the hemp plant, hemp seed. So, as we mentioned earlier, by creating a juice from the leaves, seeds, and flowers of the cannabis plant, we produce a plant-based 
blood transfusion liquid. Ideal, ideal. An liquid. ideal plant-based blood transfusion liquid for, for humans and other man, mammals that deletes and prevents mind control programming and neutralizes schizophrenia, amongst other things. These are just things that we're learning and that are cult, cult related. And makes us become super, super, uh, superhumans. And allows well. us to rebuild ourselves, yes. Yeah. Because the male plant, the male plant, it seems, contains pure DNA. And that helps to repair our DNA, any genetic mutation that's come on. So we repair our DNA with the male plant. And then we have all the raw materials to rebuild ourselves, as I mentioned earlier, according to the now repaired genetic blueprint. So it is a magical food. And... Um, and they, ch and they feel challenged by this. But as we say, it's good news. It's good news because it's available for everyone and salvation is for everyone. You see, they're drinking the blood because they've misinterpreted ancient scriptures which tell them to drink the blood of the virgin goddess or to drink the blood right. of, of virgins. And they feel that that blood is, is, is human blood. But the blood, the virgin blood that they should be drinking is a blood from the Christmas tree, the original Christmas tree, the cannabis plant. And nobody has to die. Nobody has to die to, to drink for this blood. And this is the blood that cleanses, cleanses their blood and takes away their sins. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you can, see, um, you can see why, yeah. why oh. cannabis is, is demonized by the demons. It's demonized by the demons, yeah? Right. Cannabis is demonized by the demons. You do it. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, we've covered a lot of territory on this. Um, Absolutely. And He's asking us to do a quote from the 23rd Psalm. Please. <laughs> it's the second part of the Psalm, and it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, my rod and my staff. Now we believe that the rod and staff references are references to the rod of Hermes, Hermes Mercurius Trismegistus, a mythical time-traveling alchemist. We believe that the rod of enlightenment refers to his rod of enlightenment, which happens to be the cannabis plant. And we feel that the cannabis has come to enlighten, that this is the time now for cannabis to enlighten us. Because the seed is rich in electron-rich fats. These fats carry an alkaline electric charge. They carry life force, which is one of the reasons why it's known as the tree of life. Um, we don't really want to we don't want to feel too evangelical, but this information has been has been denied, has been denied to the masses, and um, it's time now for the people to realize that you know death is not inevitable. Is not necessary, and um, every religious tradition worth its salt promises eternal life and eternal youth in paradise on earth. And anyone who sort of um, harbors any sort of hope or belief in this is considered deluded or, 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 de or deranged. But um, we feel that those, that those who believe in death and consider death to be inevitable and who worship death, and fear death, and celebrate death, and sacrifice, make sacrifice innocent oh, children, innocent children to their boat man, God of death. We feel that perhaps, perhaps their consumption of the blood has caused them, has caused them to be, to be deluded. I think you're right on target. It's really interesting how looking into the darkest of dark, which is what we've done during these two hours, leads us to see glimpses of the golden age coming up. I think it's really interesting. <laughs> it's interesting that the cast of characters here uh, assembled to uh, oppose this satanic world-conquering force. Uh, just humble people like us. Uh, but, they do, but we know special things. Abraham knows about this about this product. Uh, Ella, the fantastic, probably the most fantastic mother, high moral character on the planet. They shouldn't have, uh, with, with two probably indigo children, um, 
It's it's nothing happens by accident. Everything is everything is set in place and is rolling out exactly the way it should. We've got to end up this hour. Abraham and Ella, do you want to uh, say anything uh, finishing up here? Yes, yes. I would like to finish it off by um, by conveying the message uh, to the mothers who um, uh, suspect or um, no. who know something about um, about the um, possible child abuse or rape of their, of their children. And I'm talking about the UK specifically, and I'm sure that um, it's a very similar situation with other, in other European yeah. countries, in, in some countries actually worse, like for example in like Northern European countries like Sweden, yeah, right. Norway, Finland, the social services have only and last the word, you know, there's no even uh, court involved. They take children and that's it. Bye bye. You don't see your children ever again. And you have, if you're lucky, you only have like maybe one or two telephone conversations a year. Jeez. So, but what I'm saying is, if um, if um, someone discovered that, or children um, confess that, um, I would say do not go to the authorities and um, make your preparations. John Henning, he's uh, he's no 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 it's not actually it's uh, Ian Joseph. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, uh, I think it's a, is it well, journalist? He's journalist, so who is him? I'm not quite sure. But he's one of the whistleblowers, and he's recommending to for the one mothers as well actually as well as the SMP, um John Hemming. They both say that um, they recommend mothers to flee the country and not to report and not to report the crime. To the authorities. Because you will lose your you will lose your children. Very good advice. So this is what if I mean you know how what what a state of affairs when you're having to tell mothers that if you discover that your child is being sexually you know assaulted that don't go to the authorities. Run away. Speak to your speak to members of your community. Organize yourself and get yourself out. Plan to get yourself out of the jurisdiction unless. You're prepared to have your children taken away from you and to have to fight for them in the way in which we're having to fight for for Elise and Gabriel. You know? I think we that, suspected that you know, go on. No, go ahead. We suspected that we would have that, you know, I I did advise Ella before we took the children before we returned to UK. I said that there's a high likelihood if this cult is as powerful as, as, as they're appearing to be, that we could lose the children, you know, that they could take them from us and we'd have to fight. And we'd have to fight for them. And here we are now, fight, you know, we were aware of our situation. We, we were totally conscious of what was going on. And we just we did what we felt was best. I mean, you know. Well, we decided to reveal this. And we also yeah. um, couldn't uh, be in, in peace with ourselves knowing that, uh, that the other children, the other, well, we know that so many children, now we know that so many children are, um, are suffering like that. But we're talking specifically about those um, 20. special twenty families, which we happen to know those know children personally, people. like uh, Millie, like uh, James Upson, like, like uh, uh, Yuraj, and Sophie. Sophie, yeah. Sophie the, the, the uh, Alisa's friend Sophie, who uh, in the retractions, Alisa saying that uh, the the idea of plastic wheel has been taken from my iPad. And by the way, that Sophie never been investigated on interviews. And by the way, I'm just mentioning. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying, those <laughs> children, they don't want to be in the cult. They don't children want are, to be. Children yeah. do not want to be in yeah. the cult. And yeah. there was a specific incident when Millie came to to my house, and um, she asked Alisa whether I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna do sex to them. And Alisa said, No, my mom doesn't do it. And she said, Well, why don't we tell your mom? And Alisa said, well, you know, do you remember what they told us? They told us they're going to kill us. Uh, so the girls decided not to do it. And uh, so we, you know, we, 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 it was a mutual decision uh, between four of us to come and, uh, to come and uh, reveal this. 
And that's why children, uh, that's why Gabriel was saying to Alisa in one of the videos, oh, Alisa, tell the truth, it's very important. And Alisa saying, yes, fair, fair is a mind care killer. That's right. The children and, were uh, happy to be out of the cult. But they, they were, were happy to be out mm -hmm. of the cult, but they, was, but they, they were, were terrified. They were terrified. They knew, they knew, they knew it was a killer, it was a death cult. But they also, also, they, they, they decided, I, I feel, um, to go back also um, to save their friends. And, uh, wow. and, been... and then nobody talk about those other children. Alisa's, Alisa and Gabriel been taken, and they're mostly, most likely been abuse right now that's the most painful part of the whole thing Paul. yes i know it is for and me too. All children. we know that their children are being, and the reason that ella and i know that they've been that they've been abused is because when they were taken on the 11th of september 9 11 paul when they were taken on 9 11 and then they were examined by dr hodes they had fresh injuries on their ankles. There were two, you see, there were two examinations. So during the first examination, they didn't have anything, but all of a sudden, by whatever, several days later, they were, they, they had fresh um, bruises all over their body, and they presented me, uh, they presented those pictures to me later on. I only discovered them like many, <laughs> many months later, and they said this is caused by Abraham. And uh, and they they, they they were hurting them there, to even to retract. And uh, we know that um, uh, a lot of those foster families, they are members of the cult. And they abuse, they horrendous abuse and uh, rape uh, and uh, uh, violence uh, is, 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 is going on in like unimaginable scale. In, in these foster families, they, they adopt children and they... they um, they, they're making them become a part of the cult. And it's just crazy how they, they're destroying children's lives. They're just destroying families. They're destroying people's lives. I and mean, there's a case in Norwich at the moment, in Norwich Crown Court. I think we mentioned it before. Did we mention it before? On All the, right. On well, the, the children. Interview. On the original interview, yeah. Yeah, well, the children allege that they thought that everybody was doing it because they were only exposed to cult sure. members. And that mirrors exactly the same. Gabriel said almost exactly the same thing, word for word. The children thought that everyone else was doing it because the priest was doing it, school teachers were doing it, their parents, their friends' parents were doing it. At the tennis club, they were being, they were being abused. They go to the swimming pool. Swimming pools are a popular place for these cults as well, because, it, yeah. because they've got the children Practically almost naked, almost naked already. Yeah. Also, Topsy Turvy Land is a popular place with them because <laughs> the Topsy Turvy, the, the cult of reversal, the Sabbatai the right. Jakob Frank cult of reversal, they find it amusing. They love also to take the children to disabled toilets. I mean, there's lots of stuff we've learned about the, their behavior. We even learn how they look what a physio a physiological signs to look for. We also learn, our uh, children uh, advised us, um, how, how, they how, they teach, how the children would behave, um, and Gabriel would, both of them, uh, in fact, would, would, spot, would spot the cult members on the street, and they, they showed us how to do it too. They would they would uh, will behave will speak in, in a certain way they will be dressed in a certain way they will have some um, sort of phys physiological features as well and um, and, yeah. and, 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 yeah, and the children as well you know abused children they, they can tell as well wow. but for all this to lead, for all this to, for all this to link up to the prime minister and for Chris Spivy to, to out the prime minister as a paedophile. It's just nothing is strange to us. It all makes sense now. Right. Right. Well, I'm sure we have a lot more to talk about, so we'll have to get you back on here in the next few weeks and we can carry on. Right. It's always so out. interesting to talk to you guys. You have, to get, you. Us, you have to get us off first before you get us back on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, thank you both so much for joining us and sharing this incredibly horrible experience with the rest of the world so that we can try to stop it once and for oh, all. Oh, it's going to stop. But you've shown us so much hope at the last 20 minutes of this interview with the, uh, the stuff that you were telling us about hemp or cannabis and... Uh, also, the fact that the remedial effects of that, and uh, I think that our listeners can really take this to heart, can learn more and more about this case and the other cases that are happening. There's, weren't you saying last time there's a case, in, a major case in France and other places in Europe? Uh, let's make this as public as we can so we can get this stopped. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. Thank you. Thank very you. Thank, thanks for letting us. Thanks for having us on the show again, Paul. Okay. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you